Neuro Nation. Emily Morgan, occupational therapist and co founder of NeuroVlog here. March is Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month. We at NeuroVlog wanted to make sure we bring this to your attention as MS is a very common neurological condition that most neuro practitioners assess and treat in a variety of practice environments. Today, I'll be covering an assessment that you'll want to keep on your radar to use with patients who have MS in your evaluation and throughout different checkpoints of your care. This neurovlog will cover the Fatigue Severity Scale, or FSS for short. But first, let's talk a little bit about MS and some theories about why fatigue in MS is so prevalent. Now, symptoms of MS present itself with a huge grab bag of neurological impairments, ranging from weakness, sensory abnormalities, vision dysfunction, spasticity, pain, cognitive problems, swallowing and communication issues, walking difficulty, and balance dysfunction. While each of those could be covered in a full course, a primary impairment that almost every individual with MS will experience is called MS fatigue. MS fatigue is a highly prevalent symptom, common in 75 to 95% of individuals with MS. Well, hopefully all of us practicing in neuro rehab are promoting strategies to manage fatigue for improved function. Sometimes fatigue is the most disabling of all the symptoms. MS fatigue is not like being tired from getting a poor night's sleep. It's a deep neurological fatigue. It's overwhelming. For most people, it's as much cognitive and emotional as it is physical. MS fatigue is an impairment that you really can't see in a brief 10 second snapshot in your evaluation, like performing a gait analysis or screening for visual impairments. To get an understanding of your patient's fatigue, you really need to dive deep in your patient's medical history interview on their occupations and daily activities to read between the lines on how much fatigue will dictate their decisions lifestyle, and overall wellness. Now I'm gonna provide you with some actual examples from patients with MS who have talked to me about their fatigue. And although they did not directly say the word fatigue, read into what they're saying. Now these are simulated patient examples. Ready? I know I have to do a little at a time, but if I push myself in the morning and do everything on my list, then I'm tired for, for the rest of the day and wiped out, and sometimes even the day after. Trying to do my taxes is so hard lately. I'm trying to focus on the screen and stare at the numbers, but I just get so taxed lately, and even sometimes I just feel so tired afterwards. I can hardly visit a friend for an hour. After all that talking and catching up, I'm done and I have to leave. I surrendered to sleeping in my lazy boy lately. I only shower once a week and I only change my clothes once a week as well. It's just the thought of getting ready is so exhausting, so I figured this is the solution. What each statement is saying between the lines is that they are suffering from a neurological fatigue. I could give so many other stories, but the point is, MS fatigue is something that we all need to be knowledgeable about, assess, and learn to treat. There are several theories of what causes this fatigue, and I'll briefly cover them before we move on to discussing the FSS. One theory is that fatigue is caused by reduced electrical impulses within the brain of an individual with MS. A second theory speculates that fatigue is greater because an MS brain needs to use so many brain structures and resources during a task that normally would not cause as much demand in a brain without MS. 
A brain with a mass simply is working harder. Now the final theory I'll cover has to do with the studies that show that MS brains have an excessive supply of cytokines. And cytokines are a chemical messenger related to the immune system. Higher cytokine levels are correlated with greater fatigue in other conditions. And it just probably feels like they're fighting an around-the-clock virus. As with many complex conditions, as you see, the answer is most likely multifactorial. Now, changing gears, let's talk about the FSS, its properties, what it measures, and how long it takes to administer. A benefit of this assessment is that it's free and it's on public domain. It's a relatively short uh, assessment to complete and it can be done in about five minutes or less. The participant can complete it on their own or the therapist can walk them through the questions and guide them in their responses. The FSS is endorsed by the APTA MS Task Force, also the PD Edge, Stroke Edge, TBI Edge, and Vestibular Edge. It is a scale that can be used not just on MS, but with other neurological conditions in which neurological fatigue could be an issue, like brain injury, Parkinson's disease, uh, stroke, and cancer. The fatigue severity scale is a nine item self-report questionnaire that shows how fatigue interferes with specified activities of daily living and general life participation. The participant reads it and rates the severity according to a self-report scale. The questions get to the heart of how much activities of daily living and general life participation is impacted by fatigue. Answers are given using numbers on a seven-point scale. And if a patient answers one, they strongly disagree with the statement, but if they answer seven, they strongly agree. And they can answer other numbers anywhere from two to six. So higher numbers equal greater fatigue severity. Lower scores correlates with lower fatigue. And the minimum score a participant can get is nine, while the maximum is 63. And specifically for the MDC for MS, Learmoth et al. in 2013 found that a change in 1.9 points would be necessary to reflect a clinically important change in one response, or MDC. This equates to 38% of the overall mean score. Here is another close-up view of the nine questions. Number one, my motivation is lower when I am fatigued. Two, exercise brings on my fatigue. Three, I am easily fatigued. Four, fatigue interferes with my physical functioning. Five, fatigue causes frequent problems for me. Six, my fatigue prevents sustained physical functioning. Seven, fatigue interferes with carrying out certain duties and responsibilities. Eight, fatigue is among my most disabling symptoms. Nine, fatigue interferes with my work, family, or social life. As with all outcome measures, we need to be responsible for gathering information in the evaluation and the progress notes and the discharges. And what you do with this information is up to you, but think about at least these three things. One, what can I learn about this person? Two, what goals can I set? And three, how can I use this information to educate my patient so they have awareness and take back some control with some proactive choices, not always having to be on the reactive or defensive side when it comes to fatigue. Many people will set goals to improve score on FSS to a lower score, indicating improved quality of life and participation. So here's one example. In four weeks, the patient will demonstrate reduced fatigue interfering with life participation in ADLs 
as evidenced by decreasing the score on the fatigue severity scale from 50 out of 63 to 30 out of 63. Interventions to manage MS fatigue and general neurological fatigue will be covered in a follow-up neuroblog video. But that's it for today. So I, I hope you liked it. I hope if this was the first time you've been introduced to the FSS, you gained something from it. Be sure to use it in your battery of outcome measures. It's easy to implement and score, and it serves to really open up discussion about MS fatigue and how it affects your patient's daily life and wellness. See you next time, Neuronation.